In this video, I want to take a quick look at encapsulation using an existing class in Kotlin, something that I created in a previous example where we were parsing JSON. Now, encapsulation is one of the four major components of object-oriented programming, the others being abstraction, polymorphism, and inheritance. In Java, we usually encapsulated everything, which means we kept all of the private data private and we exposed it through a set of public getter and setter methods. Now indeed that did implement the textbook definition of encapsulation. Uh, the trick is it was a lot of typing and a lot of times we would automatically generate it and so it just kind of be a lot of stuff and 95% of the time the getter and the setter method was just returning the value or modifying the value directly without doing any additional gatekeeping. In Kotlin, we tend to have a, a slightly different perspective, depending on who you talk to. You'll notice that these variables I've declared up here do not have a visibility modifier, as we call them in Kotlin, or an access modifier, as we call them in Java. In Java, if you left the access modifier off, it, it, would, it was something that was often called package protected. It was something that really wasn't understood because it had a really weird definition. So in Java, we tended to explicitly say public, private, or protected. In Kotlin, our options are private, which means it's available only to this class itself. Internal, which is similar to public in Java, but it means it's visible everywhere in the same module. Now, public in Kotlin also does exist, and that indeed is the default. And that means that this method is available anywhere the class declaration is available. So it could be available even outside of your program if the class itself is exposed outside your program. So by default, we tend to go with internal, uh, although public is what we'll get if we don't put anything. So you notice that right now this plants variable is left at the default, which means it's public, which means anyone can go in and change it. So I want to do a little bit of encapsulation. And oftentimes, here's how we'll do it. In Kotlin, we'll put an underscore like so and uh, then we'll go ahead and declare this guy private. And now you notice that, okay, this one doesn't compile now, so I'm going to put an underscore there as well. Now the underscore indicates that this is an internal private variable. Now how do we expose this as public? Well, we don't have to do a big construction of get and set. What we can do in Kotlin is just declare kind of like a companion variable. So let's say var plants and let's give it the same type, mutable live data that holds an array list of plant objects. Got that? Now what we can do is immediately underneath this, we can declare a get method and also a set method and more to come on, on both of these in just a moment. But nonetheless, uh, by putting these directly underneath the variable, we're saying this is the getter and setter method for this publicly exposed variable. So in the get method, we'll do get open and close curly because that's typically returning something but not accepting anything. And we'll say curly return underscore plants. In the set method, a setter is usually a mutator method or something that is accepting a value and then updating the internal variable to that value. So you see that's why we have a value getting passed in here. So then we're going to do curly underscore plants equals value. And you see in three lines, we've accomplished encapsulation here. Uh, again, we could give this, uh, we could go ahead and give that internal or just leave it at public. Let's, let's go ahead and say internal, just like so. That feels a little bit more clean. But nonetheless, you see we've declared a companion variable, and then we've given it a one-line getter method and a one-line setter method. The getter method simply returns the internal value, and the setter method uh, accepts a value and then updates the internal variable to that value. Now, the value here is we could put some more checks around this. So before doing the set, we could do things like make sure that it falls within range, make sure it's a legitimate value. So this gives us a little door or a little gate where we can do things. Now, anytime we do a change, we want to go ahead and rerun our unit test. So I've run the, I paused the video for just a moment so it could compile. And I've run the plant data unit test. And now we're going to run the integration test as well. I'll pause the video one more time as this runs. The integration test passes well, so I'm going to call this change a success. I'm going to go ahead and push it up to GitHub, and at that point, my CICD pipeline will run, which will run these tests all over again. And that way we can confirm with our group that indeed this change was successful. So I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you. And it's a beautiful day. Our CICD pipeline has passed.